Yo, what is up guys? Uh, another TO Hell already passed. Um, I do recommend TO Hell to do TOA Hell when there's free room removal. I do this at any time just when TOA Hell resets. I just switch all of my best runes from Siege units and that kind of stuff to the TOA Hell units. I do TOA Hell really quick. Um, I can show you here if I fast forward you see the time. I took 2 hours and 22 minutes. I cleared to the 25 stars in just 2 hours. Or just 2 hours. I think it's pretty like fast to clear that in just 2 hours. And then I tried for like 20 minutes to do the final stage and I was like, CBA, I don't care about this one. So, I'm going to talk about what I use, what kind of stuff I use, and all the way at the end I'll show the runes. But um, free rune removal is coming up, I think it's the 3rd of January. So I highly recommend leave TOA hell until you have that free rune removal. Throw, you like best vio despair damage whatever you're using sets on these kind of units clear it really fast and be done with it like just get like the 20 stars then and you can use this video to check whatever i used and that kind of stuff so first one sierra limited harmful effects to one turn easy 25 percent chance to get stunned when attacked so that's just a despair effect so all in all pretty simple one so all the way at the end again, I'll show my runes. At least uh, some are kind of like the rune because I kept switching stuff all around and that kind of stuff. But this is just really simple. Um, this is my main team. I use this team pretty much all the time. Tyron is there to just push back attack bars, freeze that kind of jazz. Poseidon does a lot of damage. It's more like a damage build. Also freezes, silences, good stuff. He's also on despair. Make sure you have at least one unit on despair. It's always pretty useful. Balanus, violent, high damage, armor breaks, dots, everything. Ganymede, just more pushbacks. And you see nothing is even close to taking a turn. So I'm just going to fast forward a bit. I'm not going to show you the whole two hour clip. Just fast forwarding. These waves are all pretty easy. I'm just showcasing the waves real quick. So at the boss, you're actually fighting Junos here, so maybe some people kind of need a uh, Desarion instead of like a Ganymede, for example. Uh, the most important thing is keep provoking the Sierra so she doesn't do any skills. You can reset her uh, uh, skills as well, so it's pretty easy. And I thought like, oh, the Junos might be an issue, but since it's the first stage, these units have that low, um, or they don't have that much speed, that it was actually pretty easy to just keep like resetting and all the kind of jazz. Uh, main thing you want to reset from the Ganymede towards the Poseidon is, however, uh, or yeah, that's the, the main thing you want to reset because that's the best pushback. Also, if you want free to play units, it's really simple. You go Tyron, you go Dark Homunculus, uh, you go Sean, and then you go two other units. That's that's mainly the thing. Then you just go for like a damage, you know, probably Spectra. So Tyron, Spectra, Sean. Uh, Dark Homunculus with Unbalanced Field, and then the fifth one is optional. That's probably your best free-to-play team. If you have these units, however, I recommend to you to use these units. Balanus is insanely good damage from what you can see here. It's way, way better damage than Arika, for example. So, it's pretty easy this way. Like, even the Junos didn't get a half attack bar. I can say, however, these runes on these are, like, pretty hardcore. But the moment you do this during free rune removal, which I recommend anyone to do, it's pretty easy. So, let's see, boom, like three stars, let's go, next one, okay, next one we have, um, you have to counter again, and you start with a silence, so, if with the silence, you kind of have to use a tetra or a uh, veromos, and with the counter, you use any stripper, so I kind of you know, removed two units, that were, so I was just running up a Veramos. I found out later that it was actually easier to, uh, it's pretty fast, <laughs> to, to, the stun doesn't work that well. It's better to probably go for Tetra because you have like some sustain and that kind of stuff as well. Um, but I removed the two uh, units that were the least interesting for that and removed them with the Gian in my case, which is my best stripper, of course. And then the Cleanser, which is Veramos. So oh, this is my Poseidon at this point. Uh, I switch it to Despair later. It's better on Despair, actually, because if you have two units that are violent, I, I think Poseidon in general for this is better on Despair. So I removed the Sean. I don't think I would have need, Or I think I kept the Sean in. And I think I kept the Balanus and the Tyron in. And I think I removed the Poseidon and the um, Ganymede. Yeah, exactly. So then it's a little bit more difficult. Also, make sure you don't counter uh, these units. Also, I noticed my uh, Tyrone was faster than my uh, Gianna here, which is not that convenient because if you counter, you get like the, the hits on your ass. But in the end, it's still pretty doable. I think I, re yeah, I think I redid that one. Yeah, I was missing one rune on Gianna. 
That's why, yeah, my Gianna moved after the Tyrone and therefore, like, was missing one rune. So let's speed up this a bit. It's all in all, like, you have to be more careful by what you control and that kind of stuff. But all in all, I don't use any buffs, so Sherians don't really matter. This stage, this stage is a little bit more annoying, actually. Um, because you're not landing a lot of the stuff. So here is where a uh, Tetra is better than a uh, Veramos, actually. Because a lot of this stuff is not really landing. But still, all in all, it's you just have to survive a bit more. It's a little bit tricky, but it's pretty doable as well. So as you can see, I don't lose that much HP. Sean is still healing enough, and it gets a little bit tricky. Therefore, like a Tetra would be better than a uh, Veramos. So then we have these. Uh, fortunately, the side units aren't that interesting. So make sure you don't hit the Chillings. They do a lot more damage than the Smokies. As long as you kind of like hit everything and that kind of stuff. I don't have a um, a pushback, so the moment, or I don't have an, uh, a cooldown reset, so the moment Gianna would actually get a turn with a skill, then it's going to be pretty bad. Um, she pushes like a lot of attack bar and that kind of stuff, so that's not too great. So I have to keep the, uh, um, the provoke on her at all times, which is really important. Um, uh, well, actually she does a bomb, but she doesn't like right away let it explode. That's actually not that bad. But if your unit would proc at that moment, it's hella dead if Vermos didn't take a turn by then. So this was a little bit tricky, but still I was able to reset the attack bars, throw in like hella bombs on it, and then boom, done. So then we have the next one. Immune to cooldown increasing effects and increase 15% attack bar when receive damage. I was like, okay, going back to my old team doesn't sound all too difficult. Still the still the exact same team with the uh, Ganymede. This team just has way too much pushback of like attack bar. The moment I can manipulate attack bars, this team is just hella simple and hella good. So fast forward thing a bit, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, yes. Took a little bit. Yes. Didn't go that fast on this stage, but look at the health bar of my units, man. These things do absolutely nothing. So I was a little bit afraid here, but the dark one is actually an annoying one for TOA. I was like a little bit afraid that this would be that dark one, but they threw in the light one so it doesn't go for the uh, invisibility at some point. So then we're at the boss stage and we actually have the stage where the, the, the side two things nuke you, which you normally reset or something, which is not possible here. So in this case, you kind of have to freeze and my take on this was more or less, okay, I just keep pushing back the attack bar and I just go for uh, like maximum damage on the uh, on Kraka and not do too many AOEs at some point. So I stayed with Balanus just, I think I did a lot of S1s with Balanus until there was no armor break on uh, Kraka and then I started rotating again. So that's a little bit risky. Yeah, this is where I was like, okay, I just keep like S1ing because S1 actually does like a good amount of damage from Balanus. And then I just keep resetting like attack bars as much as possible. And which is the best to do with Poseidon S3. And then by that in the end, like it came a little bit close that the side units would die, but it was just close. So yeah, just be careful with AoEs. Don't spam dots and that kind of stuff. So then we're like another three, so we're at nine. And we're currently 30 minutes in. So then we got a really annoying stage. We got the Neftis. Um, I've done this before. I don't remember how actually. But I know that... Okay, here it was like, okay, I need this pair. So I started switching this pair. Fast forwarding a bit. Blah, blah, blah. Poseidon here in this stage is insanely nice. Because Poseidon S3 can't glance. So for this stage, if you have a Poseidon and you normally don't use it, I highly recommend to use it. Because you can just spam Poseidon S3. Whereas you can't really spam the Tyron S3 because you get the passives up from the uh, the snipers, which could be annoying. So I first did that. And that sec the second wave was really easy. But then the third wave was pretty difficult because you actually, I was like, okay, I, I controlled the Junos before in the previous stage. I probably can control the Junos again like more or like the same way and therefore be able to like push back enough. But I, you also have to take care of the, the Neftis S2. You can't use uh, your uh, buff on the on Jean itself. So I think I should have S2'd here. Oh no, wait, I had that one up. But yeah, it was more difficult because the, the Junos were a lot faster. And at some point, if one of the, if you start like not landing, it, it went pretty well. 
But at some point, the Juno uh, attack bar came really close. And here, yeah, I didn't reset neither, actually. So if both would have been pushed back, it would have been fine. But I reset it neither. So I needed either a proc there. So And then the moment that goes wrong, I don't have a heal block. You're insanely fucked. So I was like, okay, there it goes pretty bad. I think it's doable with the speeds that I have. But I was like, okay, let's just put a uh, Tessarium up in the field. And let's go with that. So Tessarium instead of the uh, Ganymede. Still same. These stages are all pretty easy. Actually, this is made pretty easy with the Tessarium as well. Um, so you continue on that. This stage is nothing. This stage is nothing. Here, what I first did was um, using the Oblivion on the... Uh, onwards and afterwards I started doing them on the uh, on the Junos and you just have to keep track on that silence and uh, Oblivion are often like uh, confused with each other because they're the kind of similar ish style that you don't see them too much um, so you just have to keep track that everything has two turns of Oblivion as much as possible um, that you don't overstack buffs that you cannot stack an Oblivion afterwards um, and then you can just slowly start clearing it and it's actually not that difficult. So as you can see my HP bar, my HP bar like for all my units was pretty like pretty cool. And this was actually on 3 stars as well. So that's 12 Delvamon, yes there we go. This one, Reflect 3000 CBA, I fuck, ah uh, man. I, I know you can do that with like Valeria and that kind of stuff or like go for like weird ass heals and that kind of shit. I'm like, man, I'm spamming AoEs, I'm spamming shit all day long. I don't want to do that, I skip that one. Did I skip both? No, I just skipped that one. The other one is like additional turns. Who cares about additional turns? Everything gets additional turns. So I used the standard team. I CBA'd about the uh, the 3000 reflect. I know it's possible, but for me, it just it took too long. Like I'm an hour in. I already got the Devilmon. Pretty easy. So this one, pretty easy. Nothing happening again. This one, uh, nothing happening again. Easy. If they would proc out, it could be annoying. Like if the Amelia procs out and it starts like using skills. So get the Amelia reset. That's about it. But, yeah, not too crazy. Most of the time, nothing took turns. Like this team was way too fast and they had way too many attack bar uh, pushbacks. Because I have literally, I have four units in this team that attack bar pushback. It's insanely powerful. So if you don't have this again, you can do that with Spectra, Unbalanced Field, all of that kind of good shit. So it's, it's actually like pretty similar as well. Yes, and then we have this. So um, yeah, if they proc out, it could be annoying. But I didn't feel like this was much of a threat. Like in general, just... Spamming all your skills, spamming all your skills, resetting coal bars, pretty easy, 5 stars there, so that's 14 in total, I think, yes, okay, then we have this one, this one was a little bit, this one was a little bit more new, so, uh, we have one turn of immunity, and we had limited harmful effects, so, A, needed my stripper again, Gianna, simple, Ganymede out of there, Ganymede is the most replaceable in, in this team, I think, so, I think I cleared this in one go. I think this was a stage that was more annoying for people. So yeah, these stages don't do too much. This one, oh yeah, you have the free ass here and you can't uh, you can't reset them. So I, I went for the same strategy, which is... Um, actually, one annoying thing is, if you don't have the buff or like the attack debuff on this unit, it does like hella damage. But I went for the same strategy again that uh, my plan was to... Also, the bombs are one turn, so Gian is pretty much a cheat here, to be honest. So there's better solutions to this. Uh, this might be difficult for like for people. If this is too difficult, I would recommend that you can actually like uh, do this one on lower stars. This was one of the more annoying stages for people, I think. So this one was actually pretty close. And that thing does hella damage. That thing legit does hella hella damage. So yeah, I was just trying to relate bombs for like stuns and that kind of stuff. Try to get the free as no, not too low HP. If you have a heal blocker, that's on a way to cleanse and then he uh, heal everything. So that's kind of annoying too. So yeah, th this one, this one was close in the end. Like at some point, there were like a few points it was pretty close, but in the end, managed it and then my game crashed. Ha <laughs> ha. So yeah, back at it. 
And I managed to clear it. But this one was not easy. But I did that as three stars as well. Then we have the immunity to inability effects, immune to cooldown increasing effects, and we have the uh, quad uh, Diana. So last time I did this by nuking the Diana with a Lin, which is pretty doable, but I didn't want to rerun a Lin. So what I did was I put in a Rika and I put in Tessarion. So I went for Tessarion, Rika uh, in there, and I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna spam the hella dots out of them, and we'll see if it works. So first stage, pretty easy. Second stage, pretty easy. Then we got this. And I miss half of the provokes. I'm like, dude, dude, really? So you can't stun them. You actually have to provoke them. And I was like, uh, okay, this is getting a little bit wonky. So I had two provokes from Balanus. I was really happy with that. Otherwise, I was like super fucked. So I was just like, okay, getting in the, the provokes is probably the most important thing. And that was a really bad proc, actually. So yeah, now everything gets attack bar or attack buff the moment they start doing their hit, which is really bad. And therefore my unit dropped really low. So that was not too good. I should have hit one of the others without Oblivion at that time. Yeah, this is pretty tricky, but I think I still manage it in this exact run. We get a tanky Sean. Yay, and therefore, like, I finally did a proc out. <laughs> which was... <laughs> that was pretty much my lifesaver. Yeah, and I was just trying to add as much dots as possible. That was like my main priority. Like if if I just dot the shit out of them, they will die at some point. So then we have a dead Jean. And I was like, okay, uh, I think I'm done for this round. Am I? I'm not sure. Okay, we got a proc. We got more dots. I'm liking that. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do hella damage on the boss. Because I know the boss actually doesn't have that much crazy HP. It doesn't have that much damage. So I'm just gonna go hella damage on that thing and we'll just see how far we bring it even without a healer. So we kept doing that. Um, yeah, luckily uh, she barely does any damage and I could get like a decent amount of attack bar resets with Ganymede and uh, Balanus still. So that worked out pretty well. So in the end, I still managed to clear this one relatively easy even though like Sean died. But it's just placing too many dots. But you can also just nuke the boss with like uh, high damage and that kind of stuff. It is possible. I've showed it in a previous video. So then again, crushed again. Yay! So then we have another one. Block beneficial effects. It's the Leo Ragdoll one and the um, the three thousand. And like I said, I highly CBA the three thousand thing. Man, I don't want to do that shit. It's just annoying. So I did the same thing with Rika again. Pretty full net 5 team. First two stages is pretty much nothing. This one, it's a little bit wonky. Also, you can't use this. I use it like a fucking idiot again. <laughs> because I actually do this at the, uh, the two stars. So you can stun them, however. So that's kind of the, the, the gig you have to go for. You can stun them, attack by pushback them, that kind of jazz. So... And then you just have to try to get as much dots in as possible while keeping all of them stunned. And then it's it's okay, doable. Sean died there. I'm not sure if I cleared it still on this run. No, not on this one. Oh yeah, then I went for Dover. Did, did this, this run, run actually work? I don't remember. So, yeah, da, 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 to the boss. To the boss, to the boss. Yeah, so I actually, I could like set up like two turn stunts and that kind of shit. And also Tyron wasn't really that useful because Tyron was like 190 violent set with a speed lead. I'm like, why am I even using this? And actually having the resists um, against the dots actually help out a lot. So Jean lead here is, is, is low-key like really good. And then it resists the bomb storm. Ah, resists the bomb storm, why is that still a thing? So yeah, you just try to throw in bombs, so they actually get stunned quite some. 
And I think I did manage to clear it with this rotation though. Did I? It looks a little bit wonky. It definitely does. But the Ganymede is pretty tanky. And I'm able to um, reset his cooldowns, reset his attack bar, proc a few times. But also the damage from Balanus is still pretty good. It also pushes him back and that kind of stuff. So, and you have glancing attack bar, like the thing barely does any damage if he's just glanced and has a uh, attack debuff. So I actually kept using that and then I was rotating as much of the skill three of uh, Balanus as possible that he keeps like getting the buffs up and that kind of stuff. So with like all of the debuffs, he didn't do all too much. So it was pretty close, but in the end I still managed, which was also a two star. So we're currently like 1 hour 35 or 34 minutes in and then there was that. So this is the Acroma one which a lot of people had struggles with and I kind of cheated my way through it in a really slow team and I used Bolvrik. So without Bolvrik, I've seen some people use it, I, I had to put some faster runes on it, but without Bolvrik, it's pretty annoying I think. Oh yeah, also these units do destroy so um, you have to kill the units that destroy first which are the, the water ones. So, yep, this took a whole long time. This also took a long time. It was not difficult, but just took a long time. Then we're at the boss. This was actually pretty annoying. So I was using Tessarion to Oblivion, like the two mermaids on the side. Stealing their HP bar for like 100k heal. Let's go. The only issue is, which I actually never really tried. If a unit has no HP, you can't heal it. But also on the boss, you can't use that skill. So, um... The issue is, at some point, you don't have a healer anymore, uh, or at least Bolvik is no longer a healer. And you just have to fight the Akroma still. So you kind of have to be lucky that your healers are kind of alive the moment you kill that. Um, good thing is, like, if you do it on three stacks, you just heal for 40k anyways, which is super cheat. So this is actually three stars as well. So yeah, this just took hell of time. Um, also, the they killed my uh, Sean at some point, which was not that, not that pleasant. Like even these units, they did hella damage. So yeah, st still going on. I was like, ah, I might as well try. So here we have the Christina's like hitting my uh, vigor and stuff, and I was just trying to like rotate as many like cycles with uh, Amelia and that kind of shit. So I actually had like quite some stacks up when I needed a healing, but I also had to be careful at some point that I had to start hitting the uh, Acroma here because I needed to, like at some point I didn't have a healing source anymore except for like just figure, and Acroma still does like quite some damage. So, yep, so I saved like the S3 of Bolvik for quite a while until like uh, figure was low HP. And afterwards, I think he didn't focus Vigor all too much. He did from time to time. Oh yeah, he started focusing Bolvrik, which was really good. That was like the perfect target for me to focus because that was he had struggles to kill it. And then he was focusing Amelia, which was even better because Amelia has, the, has self heal and has like shield buff and that kind of shit. So I was really lucky that he didn't focus the Siren because he would have died like pretty easily. But yeah, this this is an annoying stage. Like, if you want to do lower stars, I would recommend this one for lower stars as well. So there, did that one on uh, that as well. And then um, I was at 25 stars already. Uh, I was thinking about doing the last boss, but I don't have a Spectra 2A. I do have Rika right now. Without Spectra 2A, this stage is just hella annoying. Like, I tried a few things. I got one shot a few things. Then I tried it on one star, and I was like, man... I'm out with this stupid stage. I hate this stage. I'm not gonna lie. I hate this stage. So I think Sp Spectra 2A is just super necessary for this. And I don't have a Spectra 2A. And I don't feel like Spectra 2 a anytime soon. So that's that. So that's my 25 stars in about... Yeah, about like two hours. A little bit more than two hours. So including reruning everything. So then the runes. The moment you've all been waiting for. Wait, I just went through the stage. So, um, yeah, this is a 119 uh, set and I'm missing two runes. So this was a 29 rune and this is, of course, a 42 rune. So you can kind of calculate that this was like a 190 uh, Tyrone of Violet. Um, 
This Poseidon was Despair. I use this set for the most time. It's pretty fast, 150, 40 Eki is pretty nice. Uh, also, uh, I have Eki um, artifacts and 71 crit rate. So this does like quite some damage and it's pretty nice in general. Then we have the Sean. Sean was kind of overdone as well. 177 file on like plus 26k HP with also like near like 900 defense, still high Eki. So yeah, it was, a, it was a good set, it was a good set. Then we have Balanus. Balanus pretty much has like one of the sets like completely copied. So that's just a uh, vile wheel set. Uh, wheel, not necessary, but whatever. So I just copied the whole set. It has like everything damage, enough HP, defense, that kind of stuff. It can survive. It dishes out a lot of damage. It has accuracy, yeah, everything. Also accuracy uh, artifacts again. Then Rika that I use is just despair, whatever. Uh, doesn't matter too much reasonably speedy what else did i use i think the ganymede oh yeah the ganymede's 173 vio as well again just just another vio set so yeah that's it what i used uh, for uh, also like if i used any other uh, units i use these runes but then on the other units so you kind of get the feeling of what kind of runes i use is this kind of like overkilling yes it is did i want to clear this <laughs> this thing really fast yes and therefore i recommend everyone just do this on the free rune removal like the start of the day free rune removal throw your best runes at it J just tackle the like the 20 stars within like maybe you need like a bit more time like two three hours and then just put out back the runes and it's just or if you have too much mana do it at any time you feel fit but uh also i really recommend to go for the devil mount always the other two are optional because you know most of the time in LD and uh, LS scroll they're not going to give you that much stuff. Mostly it's going to be a net 4 and a net 3 anyway. So Devil Moon is always really useful afterwards, more optional. So, But then again, especially if you're like a bit like lower uh, or like earlier game, that kind of stuff. Try to do this on free room removal. It really helps. So again, more free to play team. Tyron should be still Tyron. Um, this was Ganymede before, but it can replace by the Unbalanced Field Dark Homunculus. Replace this with a Spectra, keep in the Shan, and then the fifth is optional, like depending on what kind of stage you're doing, what fits. Uh, options are any of these units that I've been showing here. Any type of damage, any type of attack bar pushback, and anything of that. There's a whole bunch of units that fit that role, so you can use a whole bunch of that. And probably one of the units that I have you can also use because you have one of those even things like charlotte and that kind of stuff if it pushes back attack bar if you can put aoe damage on it if you can put like despair on it that kind of stuff it will really work so that's it for toa hell for uh this month i'll probably do it next month again uh, i actually recorded this on the first day that toa hell reset which is i think about like eight nine days ago so i was kind of late on like publishing this video i just didn't like record it with the voice and that kind of stuff so I'll try to do be more <laughs> more like up to date with that kind of stuff, but at least it's before the free room removal, which I highly recommend people to use. So thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Like this video, comment on it. Always helps the channel out to grow and that kind of stuff helps me to motivate to push more content. So thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one.